Uh, we continue talking about the arts and so many great opportunities here in the city of Ottawa. We go from theater to talking orchestra, but this is a really, really unique one. Um, so family friendly and the beauty of it is you're going to recognize so much of this music. And I think what makes it special too is young people will recognize a lot of the music, although it, it may not be the genre of music they're, they're used to. I'm joined by Mathieu Roy. He's the artistic director of the Ottawa Pops Orchestra. Welcome back. Great to have you. Thank you for having me back in person this time. Uh, yeah, nice. another year though and um, for people that aren't familiar give us a little bit of background on on Ottawa Pops. For sure yeah so this kind of like started back in 2017 and like the, the purpose of it was really to create a space for young upcoming musicians that are maybe um, you know studying at school and want to kind of continue their journey into professional music world but like have a stepping stone um, and offer them a different type of repertoire so that's kind of where we started okay. from um, and as a place for people to play music while having fun as well, you know, there's there's the whole um, the, the the duality of you know being a classical musician, always having to perform, which is also true. And then, but like with that separation of uh, different music genre, where we're setting with classical and that kind of stuff. So now, um, and then while creating that, we create the space in the Ottawa community to. Um, exposed the general public to live symphony orchestra, but using music that they may be a bit more familiar to. Right, and I, you know, I love that you mentioned you know young people because I think sometimes when we think classical music, we always think sort of in the past when it comes to classical, and people forget that classical music is still used in so many varieties Everywhere. of ways, and composers are still composing masterpieces today, right? Yeah, for video games, uh, like anything that we consume, right? It's there's there's always a, a soundtrack. So, so these people that are behind the scenes are creating the soundtracks of our lives. Yeah. And we don't necessarily think that, oh, right, I'm watching a movie, but there's an orchestra of like 60 to 100 musicians playing while you're listening to that movie. Right. So what we're doing is taking that experience and bringing it to the concert hall and using that vehicle of going to the movies, um, literally in this case, uh, to, to really bring that music to life. Yeah, let's talk about the concert. So it's called the Symphonic Cinema Epic Film Score and you yes. choose a variety of epic films each year. Uh, give us a sense of what we can expect yeah, this year. Yeah, so it's a bit of a formula that we kind of came up with, and this is the first one of this series, so we'll have different iterations of okay. you know, the symphonic cinema um, in future seasons, and what we're doing is really kind of picking from the best of the best, and this one we're really kind of looking at like the, the, the meaty stuff, right? Okay. And so uh, we're looking at Jurassic Park with John Williams, we're looking at Batman Dark Knight Rises with uh, Hans Zimmer, uh, and then we have Titanic as well, you know, that's maybe a bit yeah. more romantic, but that's really kind of a classic that we couldn't move away from. And, you know, folks that are um, familiar with Celine Dion or My Heart Will Go On, we have a wonderful soloist, Emily Lozier, who's going to be singing that song with us as well. So we're kind of mixing with uh, the kind of the, the standard orchestral repertoire, but with, uh, with a really fun pops twist. Yeah. yeah, so what is that? What is that twist? Because I know you've got some special surprises that you love to bring yeah. into the concert so as well. So we try well. to do a, a bit of audience engagement at all of our shows, right? Okay. Which is, so instead of kind of, um, when you go to the theater, you know, you, you sit in the hall and you listen to the orchestra and there's less of that engagement. And I think what we're really trying to do is really to bridge that gap and really have a conversation with our audience. Right. So we always try to have a theme to uh, to tie that together. So for this one, um, you go into the movie, so we have like uh, the narrative of the, the, the music and the feelings that you're going to be doing. And it's really interesting what Ted was saying, whereas like when you're in the theater, you kind of get to forget your troubles for a little yeah. bit. And I always have this thing where like, what is good art? Well, it's art that changes you. Mm -hmm. And I think if we're able to make you relive those feelings that you were feeling, as you were watching that film, then we did a really great job. Matthew, what do you think makes you know film music so so special? I, you know, and, and I'm not sure. I mean, is it an idea of you've you've done the film, you've completed filming it, and then the music comes, or or do we see a, a yeah, blend of those? It two depends things? on the composer because really you can look into that whole process, and sometimes you'll have directors who will really go after one specific composer for their voice and for their ability to change things. And okay. I think. Um, John Williams, Hans Zimmer, those great composers of today, they're really the, the great composers, like, comparative to Mozart and Bach, right, just a couple hundred years later. Yeah. And I think those are the symphonies of today are really those film scores. That's what we're consuming. That's what we're, we're uh, where that, the music boundaries are getting pushed. And they're using the same motifs, they're called lit motif in, okay. you know, from Germany that, like, Wagner would use, and he was the first one to associate a specific theme to a character. 
and John right. Williams does that a lot. You know the Darth Vader theme. You know, oh, the bum, yeah. bum, bum. <laughs> well, you know when that music is playing, even if Vader is not on screen, you know that we're thinking about that film. Yeah. So that's really the power of using these classical techniques in a very modern sense, and it's just kind of very integral to the film writing process. So. Do you find that um, the audience that, that you get, a, a large proportion of that audience may have never been to the orchestra before and, and this is their first, you know, it, yeah, experience? It, it really is because we've, we're doing some, some studies and we're trying to, we're pooling our audience every time that they come and because of the repertoire that we're showing them, it's something that is a bit more accessible to them, then right. they're, they're willing to take that chance, right? When we do something about like Harry Potter, you'll have those Harry Potter fans. When we're playing something with Disney, you'll have the Disney fans with the family coming in right. and oftentimes those folks have never seen a live symphony orchestra because they never had the opportunity to or thought they would be relevant to them. So we're opening that door, which it's a very slippery slope. Be careful if you come. You'll always <laughs> want to come back. You'll fall in love. It's, right? and, and I think then, because you've had different, you do different themes, right? Yeah. You mentioned video games before, and I believe that's that was last that year. Was, yeah, we, that? we did a video games orchestra show, and that was really fun. Where we had we invited four people in the audience to come on stage. We gave away a Nintendo Switch wow. while the orchestra was playing the soundtrack and. They they were playing Mario Kart live <laughs> on the big screen. That so like that's great. the kind of stuff that we like to do and we want the orchestra to be fun and, and come as you are, right? You, you come in jeans and shorts, it doesn't matter. You can bring your two-year-old, it's fine. People and you can bring your phone, right? Yes, like, I mean, so many of these concerts that we go to, you know, that's the first thing everyone said, put your phones away. You you encourage you, this and I think that helps in, in, in bringing in that younger audience it too. It does and not, even, not necessarily just young, just having a conversation. I think sometimes instead of just presenting something to you, we're really asking you to share with us okay and I think that's kind of we want to have that exchange of dialogue and, and of energy and I think that's I'm an actor to start with and then now we're, we're kind of translating that to the symphony orchestra as well and as artists we really want to it's an exchange of energy with our audience yeah. and yeah, that's it's a want. great it's a great experience for people that haven't gone to a show before it's an amazing experience I'll just from thank you so much for being here yes. it happens uh, at the Carlton Dominion Chalmers Center on Friday June the 2nd 7 30 p.m. I'll share that website with you at the end of the show as well Thank you.